Hello everyone, it's a pleasure to be here again. This is a continuation of our last segment where we got to meet Joel Joshua. And in this episode, you get to know more about his specialization. For, so for my folks who are interested in a master's in energy law in the US, for those who are interested in Penn State University, I think this is an episode for you. You get to know more about it in detail, right? Rather than just the master's in general. So um, I'll jump right to it. who come and say oh i just want to do a general llm i don't have any specialization do you think there is any advantage to having a specialization here in the us or it doesn't matter from an employment perspective i think the special the the advantage i would say off the top of my head is identification mm. because it's like you've identified with this field that this is what you want to do mm. so you know, if you go on my LinkedIn profile, I put LLM candidates, you know, LLM candidate, Penn State, LLM candidates in bracket energy law. So, like any recruiter that sees my profile just knows that that's where I want to specialize in. Not just recruiters, also for me, but it's an area I'm passionate about and I just really want to focus. I believe that this law is really large and you need to choose what works for you. And so, the advantage I think is job search. The advantages with job search when it comes to you know picking out a particular area also not just job search but opportunities like speaking opportunities or people just inviting you for stuff or anything they just know that this is what you identify with you know so for me um, yeah I, I think that's a good point to note I, I'm not sure that I thought of it in that light um, I do think it's good to have a specialization it shows you know, it, it has, uh, it's a master's. You've been a, a jack of all trades from your LLB. Why the come to your LLM and do a, be a jack of all trades, right? Exactly. This is a time for you to start creating your niche and, and saying, okay, this is what I identify with. Tell us about your specialization. About my specialization, it's in energy law. So Penn State has a list of a whole bunch of courses that when you take, you earn a concentration in a particular course. So if you want to do concentration in national security law, there are some concentrations you have, there are some modules you take to earn a national security law LLM concentration. Same thing for energy, there are modules you take. And that's why in Penn State you can you can have you can do an LLM, one LLM that is going to earn you no. an LLM in IP law, an LLM in energy law, and an LLM in national security law. And your certificate, they are going to ask you which one do you want written right but basically what i'm saying is that you have an opportunity to do a whole lot of courses and if you're somebody that likes to learn right and you have all that time you can take so many courses and as long as you can juggle all together my energy law concentration i'm currently going to my spring semester which is my second semester but in my first semester i took courses in energy law and policy you know which is um, a, a thoroughly interesting course Thoroughly interesting because I found it thoroughly interesting. Stuff from electricity, transportation, energy transportation, um, how the US built its roads. It's it's an extremely it's an extremely enjoyable you know course, you know, yeah, especially when you want to do energy law and policy and uh, energy law LLM. Um, then I had another course I did in uh, renewable energy and energy justice. Renewable energy, we all know is a contemporary um, area of law. Uh, I mean, contemporary issue in the world. And renewable energy law is very contemporary. You know, and so, so much to learn. New concepts coming up. Okay. And, yeah, so I did. And then we also had the opportunity to work with a community that wanted to install, you know, solar and all that. So, yeah, that those were my main energy courses last semester this semester i'll be doing climate change natural resources why should anyone pursue a master's in energy today like why is that important yeah i mean good question you know definitely there's a lot of relevance like the phone or the device we're using to record this is powered by what energy electricity True. i didn't know, you know that i didn't <laughs> so think about that energy is everywhere around us and it's very essential so when you go to the world's energy poor countries you know then you see how important energy is energy even gives you like motivation to actually work mm -hmm. you know so so um it's very relevant and now because of climate change global warming the need for decarbonization a lot of people are moving towards clean energy 
And so that's why, even though I'm doing a master's in energy law, you know, um, um, even the program itself, the school has mentioned the program is focused on, mm -hmm. you know, gas and renewable energy and other newer sources of energy. So energy is actually very relevant because of the fact that renewable energy is developing new transaction methods are developing new laws need to be written new policies so you will never run out of work so yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah it's relevant here anywhere and in uh, in nigeria, nigeria. Okay. i mean uh, yeah. you talk about scholarship what other opportunities are there in penn state for students like okay. for international students what other Funding opportunities like you know housing or food. Okay, so first and foremost, Penn State falls into the category of a school called the land grant university. I have no I, idea what that is, but you know, you know. Well, not completely. <laughs> One of such schools is that university is the University of Illinois too, and they're very usually these land grant universities. I think it has something to do with the government giving them land to you know further educational purposes and all that, and they get a lot of funding from the federal government. So. They do give a lot of like tuition waivers mm -hmm. and scholarships. And so, like for instance, now if I zero in on Penn State, State's College to start with is an affordable town to live in. Okay. Right? It's an affordable town to live in. Um, another thing is that Penn State doesn't just give those like tuition waivers. The opportunities for accessing funding for housing, I've never had to access that funding. But I know that when you're in the school, the opportunities for you, if you're having difficulty with housing, you can access a funding like that. There are also opportunities for, you know, just giving out food to students, you know, and, you know, just, they're, they're very helpful. Mm -hmm. In my opinion, mm -hmm. I think they're very generous. I would have gone into comparing my undergraduate university and this one, but I'll leave that for another day. <laughs> Let's but, leave that part. <laughs> but yeah, they're very generous and, um, with my experience with them so far, I would say they're very helpful. Okay, that's that's really good to know because as you know, as an international student, you're moving here, and um, things might be pretty rough in the beginning, like just yeah. trying to find your footing. So it's always good to find a school that provides that type of support, yes. right, until you find your footing. Exactly. So um, I think another thing that people would be willing to know is internships, okay. right? Um, are there such opportunities for energy, international students pursuing energy or international students at Penn State? Internships, um, paid or unpaid, and what does that look like for international students? In all honesty, I'll be, I'll be honest and say that my experience in the US so far is more of a labor shortage. Sometimes it's even really accurate. Mm. Even down to skilled labor shortage. Interesting. Yes. Especially with COVID too. I think COVID about Exactly. Reason. For instance, in my school, when you go to the portal where they advertise jobs, it's it's always there are always like jobs that they, they keep updating I them. I know. You know, I agree and, with that. That was my yeah, so, like a lot of international students that I know are research assistants and all that. So I believe that you know this out for so lesson that I'm talking about inside school number outside school internships too. Yeah, opportunities. I do know a couple of people, you know, I do know someone who even in his first semester is already interviewing for jobs as an LLM. Okay. You know, he's already interviewing with companies in the yeah. US, okay. you know, as an LLM. So I do believe that. Are there a lot of opportunities? Yeah, definitely you have to, you know, what we call package yourself, do your branding, what your CV and everything. You know, you get a lot of that advice too from the school. Like, if it's a good school, yes, right? You get a lot of that advice on how to do your CV and all that. You know, yeah, so okay, I think that's good to know. For me, my story was kind of different. I didn't work as a research assistant, I worked for a software company, I interned for a software company while I was a student. And I won't lie, I believe that having that experience before you leave school mm -hmm. always helps. So, if you don't get something paid, it's always good to look out for even volunteering because um, people like to see that this person is, you know, is active in the community, right? Exactly. So, that type of volunteering work speaks volumes for you. In fact, in the US, you see a lot of times that when people do CVs, even though the CV is one page, there's always a place for volunteering. Or something. True, true, you got that right. True, true, true. So, how do you advise people? Go about looking for these opportunities. There are a couple of websites, you know, Indeed, I N D double -E, e D, popular website for jobs, you know. So what you just do is you go there, you drop your CV, you even state stuff like how much you're willing to take a salary, then you indicate um, where you want to work, then you can create alerts for 
positions that match your role. So let's say you're looking for a legal intern role, right? So you create an alert for a legal intern. Same thing, there's another website called Glassdoor, Glass and then Door. Same thing, you go there, drop your CV, create your alerts. Um, LinkedIn, popular website, you can also create alerts on LinkedIn. They have very good resources. There's mm -hmm. also one called, you told me about Zip Recruiter. Mm -hmm. Yes, so Zip Recruiter, Zip and then Recruiter. Yes, that's another website where you can go and drop your CV and you know, um, you get alerts for jobs and then apply on those websites too. Some, in fact, some recruiters use those websites to recruit. Yeah. Exactly. Such a pleasure to have you here. I think this is Thank our you, final Gemma. segment um, together. Um, and it's, yeah, so everyone give it up for Joe. Just so I will provide his, <laughs> I will provide his link um, in the bio somewhere below this video. Um, really to his LinkedIn page and you'll find out all the interesting stuff. You always see him on LinkedIn, <laughs> like he's pretty active on LinkedIn yeah. and yeah, so it's super... That's my Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> Please, I do my own Instagram, but yeah, it's such a pleasure. So thank you so much and everyone, I do hope you have a, a good one and hoping to see you in the next episode. Okay guys, take care. Bye everyone. Bye.